So now we start on another topic in graph theory, namely the topic of simple graphs. So last week we were talking about directed graphs where the arrows have a beginning and an end as shown here. But simple graphs are simpler. The arrows, uh, the edges don't have direction. Uh, they just correspond to a, 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 conne a mutual connection, which is symmetric. Um, so there's a picture of a simple graph and the edges are shown without an arrowhead. Um, a special thing about directed graphs is that it's possible to have an arrow going in each direction between two vertices. But when we have undirected edges like this, that doesn't happen. So there's only one edge between a pair of vertices in a simple graph. In addition, a directed graph might have a self-loop, an, uh, an edge that starts and begins uh, at the, uh, that starts and ends at the same vertex. And those are also disallowed in simple graphs. Now, you could allow those things. There's a thing called multigraphs where there are multiple edges between uh, vertices and there could also be self-loops, but we don't need those. Let's not complicate matters. We're talking about simple graphs. Okay, so the formal definition of a simple graph is that um, it's an object G that has a bunch of parts. Namely, um, it has a non-empty set V of vertices, just like directed graphs. And it has a set, of e, uh, a set E of edges, but the edges now are somewhat different since they don't have beginnings and ends. An edge just has two endpoints that are in V and we don't distinguish the endpoints. So let's just draw a picture. Uh, here's a case where there are six vertices V, shown in blue, and there are these undirected edges shown in green. In this case, I see uh, seven edges in E. Um, there's an example of an edge that goes between two vertices that I've highlighted in yellow and red, and we've made that particular edge dark green. Um, an edge like that can formally be represented as just the set of its endpoints a set of two things, red and yellow. Um, uh, in text, we'll often indicate it as uh, the two vertices connected by a horizontal bar, but you have to remember that the order in which the red and the yellow occur don't matter because it's really a set consisting of red and yellow. Uh, when two vertices are connected by an edge, they're said to be adjacent, and the edge is said to be incident to its endpoints, just a little vocabulary that we use here. A basic concept in uh, graph theory, which is what we're going to make a little bit of in this video segment, is the idea of the degree of a vertex. The degree of a vertex is simply the number of incident edges, the number of edges that touch it, the number of edges for which it's an endpoint. So let's look at the red vertex. Uh, there are two edges incident to the red vertex, so its degree is two. Okay, let's look at the yellow vertex. Uh, here there are four edges incident to the yellow vertex, so its degree is four. No surprises yet. So let's examine um, some properties of uh, vertex, vertex degrees that are motivated by a simple example. Suppose I ask the question, is it possible to have a graph with vertex degrees of two, two, and one? So implicitly, it's a three vertex graph. Um, and uh, one vertex has degree two, another has degree two, and one has degree one. Well, let's see what it looks like. Um, if I'm gonna have a vertex of degree one, then I know what it looks like. There's the vertex, it's got one edge out of it. It's going to some other vertex. Now this other vertex must have degree two, so it's connected to uh, something else, and the something else must be another vertex with degree two, because those are the only possible spectrum of degrees, one, two, and two, and that means that this last guy has, has to have an edge out of it because it's degree two and it can't go back to two because there aren't any, there's already an edge between these two and it can't go back to one because that has degree one, so we're stuck. And by this ad hoc reasoning, we figured out that there can't be a degree three graph with this spectrum of degrees, two, two, one. It's impossible. Well, we could have reasoned more generally and there's a very elementary property of degrees that we're gonna actually make something of in a minute and it's called the handshaking lemma. It says that the sum of the degrees of, summed over all the vertices is equal to twice the number of edges. There it is written as a formula, twice the number of edges. So that's the cardinality symbol. Absolute value of a set means the size of the set. E here is finite. Twice the number of edges is equal to the sum over all the vertices of the degree of the vertices. Why is that true? Well, if you think about it, in the sum on the right, every edge is counted twice, once for each vertex that it's the end of. So we're really just counting, and this is a way of summing up uh, uh, 
uh, over all of the vertices in which each vertex gets enumerated twice, so the sum is twice the number of vertices. And the proof is kind of trivial. Well, let's make something of this. You might wonder why it's called the handshaking lemma. Uh, that will emerge in, uh, in some problems that we're going to have you to do. Uh, but let's go on and apply the handshaking lemma in an interesting way. And uh, by the way, of course, since 2 plus 2 plus 1 is odd, we could have, without that ad hoc analysis, figured out that uh, the sum of the degrees can't be odd because it's twice something. All right, so here's the application that's designed to get your attention. It is an application of graph theory to sex. Um, and we ask the question, are men more promiscuous than women? And there have been repeated studies that are cited in the notes uh, that show again and again that when they survey collections of men and women and ask them how many uh, sexual partners they have, it's consistently the case that the men are assessed to have 30% more, 75% more, sometimes two and a half times, three times as many partners as the women. And there's got to be something wacky about this. We're going to come up with a very elementary graph theoretic argument that says that this is complete nonsense. Um, by the way, the uh, mo most recent study that we could find was one that's mentioned in the notes in 2007 uh, by uh, the US Department of Health. And the statistician who collected the data knew that the results were impossible. But her job was to report the data, not to explain it or interpret it. And the men reported 30% more partners than the women. And we're going to show that somebody's lying. Here's how we're going to do it. We're going to model uh, the uh, relationships between men and women by having a graph that comes in two parts. It's going to be called a so-called bipartite graph. So there's going to be one set of vertices called M and another set of vertices called F, M for men and F for women or females. Uh, and uh, we're going to have edges going between men and women between M's and F's precisely when they have been involved in a sexual liaison. So um, uh, looking back at uh, this graph, this edge from that uh, blue M to that orange F indicates that they had had a sexual liaison. They were partners. OK, so this is a simple graph structure that we can use to represent who got together with whom in any given population of men and women. Now, if you think about the same argument that we use for handshaking, um, if you sum the degrees of the men, you're counting each edge exactly once. And so the sum of the degrees of the men is equal to the number of edges in this graph. And likewise, if you sum over the females, uh, you're counting each edge once. And so the sum of the female degrees is also equal to the number of edges. In particular, the sum over the degrees of the males uh, is equal to the sum over the degrees of the females. Because every time there's a liaison, it involves one male, one female. All right, now let's just do a little bit of elementary arithmetic. I'm going to divide both sides of this equality by the size of the male population, by the number of men. And if I do that, I get this formula. The left-hand side is the, number of, uh, is the sum of the degrees of men divided by the size of the M population. And here I'm doing a little trick. Notice that the Fs cancel out. But I've expressed this sum of the female degrees divided by M as the sum of the female degrees divided by F times this factor f over m, which is the ratio of the populations of women to men. Now, the reason I'm doing this is that if you look at this thing on the left, this is the average degree of the men. This is the sum of all the degrees of men divided by the number of men. So it's the average number of partners that men have. And likewise, now you can recognize over here that I've got the average number of partners that each woman has. And what we've just figured out then is that there's a fixed relationship between the average number of partners of men, the average degree of the m vertices, and the average degree of the f vertices. And these two average degrees, these average numbers of partners, is simply related by the ratio of the populations. The average men degree is the female population divided by the m population times the average degree of the females. Now, what that tells us is that 
um, these wild figures of twice as many and 30% and more and so on are completely absurd because we know a lot about the ratio of females to males in the population. As a matter of fact, in the US overall, uh, there are slightly more women than men. Uh, there's 1.035 women for each man in the US population. And that tells us then that when you, uh, if you surveyed the population of all the men and women in the country, you would discover that the men looked three and a half percent more, uh, had three and a half percent more partners uh, than women per man. But this has nothing to do with their behavior or promiscuity or lack of it. It's simply a reflection of the ratio of the populations. Which gets us to the question of where do these crazy numbers come from? And the answer seems to be that uh, people are lying. Um, one explanation would be that men exaggerate their number of partners and women understate their number of partners. But the truth is that nobody knows exactly why we get these consistently false numbers, but we do get them consistently in one survey after another. You will no longer be fooled by such nonsense.